hope. The scripture says, if this whole world is our only hope, he said, we are above all men, the most miserable. Thank you because you are not making us miserable. Yes, well, we thank you, Lord. The word will come today from you. Let it mix with faith in us. Yes. The Lord, at the end of today, we have reason to celebrate. Yes. Thank you, King of Kings. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Yes. Can somebody clap your hands for the Lord Jesus Christ? May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let's have our seat. I celebrate grace in God in the life of every one of us. Thank God for the for the people that, that for our people that did the choir. I so much I mean the, the choir. I say thank God for your for the ministration. I thank God for the drama or the playlet. It was a good one. It was on the spot. And I say thank you. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. And the main ministration today, I'm looking at it. I want to be a bit brief since um just give me about maybe 25 30 minutes i should be through with the ministration because we can come to church on a day like this that won't have a word for the for the man and the scripture that we read the, the text that we read i've done a bit of justice to what i will say today i want us to know that uh, the topic today is um for father's days don't give up don't give up Issues will happen in a journey of life. And at a point in your life, you are saying that, I'm done. Um, I'm, I'm already a failure. You understand? There are a lot of things that have been dangled at your face. And you look as if that it's like, I, I, I'm not getting it right, even as a father. We, we move from the level of being a boy to a level of being a man. But the other two, they are privileges, which is being a husband is a privilege. It's not a right. And the next one, which is being a father, is equally a privilege. It is never a right. If you find yourself at this level that you can say you are a father, I congratulate you because it's not given to every man. I told you last week, my background in engineering. When they advertised two particular trucks in this country, Dodge and Ram, is a manufacturing car manufacturing company. There's one the, the Dodge company and the Ram. There was an advert they said, if you can't dodge it, you ram it. And that's the way a man is formed and the a man is wired. We don't dodge. We ram it. In the process of it, we get wounded. In the process of it, it gets scarred. But we don't dodge it. Because expectations of the whole family is that dad got it. And it's going to be solved. Some months back, I traveled. I was coming from the United States, uh, from UK, United Kingdom. Went for administration. You, you people know about it. And I took Delta hairline. And I said, you know, Delta will first stop at Atlanta. So I was there. As I landed at Atlanta, my phone rang. It's been ringing for a while, but I just picked it. And it's a call from my daughter. Dad, my car has a problem. Hey, I'm, I'm just coming from London. I'm still in Atlanta. I can't fix the car. The car is on the road. Well, I'm just there. How do you want me to do it? Okay, just find somewhere to push it to when I come. And while I was still there in a tr transit, I kept talking with her. I landed I, from, from the airport, Newark airport, got home, dropped my bag, went to see how we can fix the car. Dad, you don't share responsibility. They say one thing, you can send anybody any job. But that which is pertaining to you as a father, you don't delegate it. You may not get it right at the initial stage, but I'm telling you, people will appreciate it. And so the scripture today that I want us to read from, Job chapter 1, verse 1 to 5 says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and the man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God with reference, and, and, and abstained from, from and turned away from evil, because he honored God. Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. He was, he 
also possess, possess 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke pairs of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very great number of servants, so that this man was the greatest and the wealthiest and most respected of all the men of the east, northern Arabia. His son used to go in turn and feast in the house of each one on his, on his day. And they would send word and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them when the days of their fasting were o feasting were over. Job was sent for them and consecrate them. Rising early in the morning, offering burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Not with their mouth, in their heart. Job did this at, such, at all such times. May the Lord bless the reading of his words. There was a man in the land of us. This man was a man that was, number one, very blameless. Two, upright. Three, feared God. Four, abstained from any form of evil. The quality of a good father. Some years ago, this musician, it's a worldly musician, sang a song, Luther Bandros. Uh, dancing with the father again I want to say congratulations to some of you that your dad is still alive but I can also feel you if your dad had gone home appreciate your fathers when they are alive they may not get it right you are not in their shoes one of my friends while we were growing up had issues his mom and his dad they were having issues and I remember the dad called us, who was so young. And the, my friend was just behind his mom, backing his mom, backing his mom, making the whole issues at all. I know the dad just called us. We were just in secondary school. He said, you don't understand all these things. He said, thank God, you guys, are, you, are, 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 you, 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 grow mar you grow old and you get married. You understand what it means. Down the line, fast forward, five years ago, I called my friends. Friend, he said, ah. Say, so you see that thing that daddy said that time? Daddy was very right. Hear me. Don't blame your father. Don't ever blame your mother. Don't blame anybody. Because you are not in their shoes. Today, many of us will say, our father is this, our father is that. Some people are naturally bad. There's nothing you can do about it. Like they said some, to some people, somebody that doesn't see a future in a, in a friendship with you, in a business with you. Why do you continue to do the same business with that person? The business will never succeed. There's something you do about it. So it is. There are some people that are naturally bad. And God will help you that for some of some people that are not younger ones that are still believing God for their bone of their bone, the flesh of their flesh, that you will not miss it in the journey of life. You will not miss it in the journey of marriage. Issues will happen. This uh, misunderstanding will happen. It's part of the four courses or five, five credit courses in, um, it's a major course in marriage. But I tell you, you're going to survive it if you can believe God. You see, with your strength, you can't do it. Because every one of us that we are here, we have our ego. And we protect it jealously. And I tell you, if you are not careful, that will destroy you. And so I'm begging us, that we have as a father we have responsibilities and number one of our responsibilities number one, love psalm 103 verse 1 to 13 psalm 103 verse 13 he said just as a father loves his children so the lord loves those who fear and worship him with all field respect and deepest reference responsibility of a father that's what i'm telling you you must love having compassion you see love goes beyond all these big rings you you just love i one of my friends told me in the course of the week he said pastor with all these things i said look you know the moment i get with you you are my church 
neighbor, you are my friend, you are everything. I always believe that one day you're going to offend me. And so I forgive you in advance. So even if you offend me, you know the... Whether I say sorry or no sorry, I will do myself a disservice by holding it because my prayers will be in that. So I forgive you in advance. So when you forgive, when I, you come, I just forgive. So love without love and compassion is what God is expecting of you, your responsibility. Number two, be disciplined as a father. Be disciplined. Now, discipline is different from how we grow. Many of us grew up, we that grew up from Africa. How you know a father? They say your father, father is a disciplinarian. Is that the man can beat very well? He got cane, he used belts, anything with it. He used the fan belt of his car to build and beat anybody. And that's why I say the man is a disciplinarian. Now, no, that man is wicked. And I tell you, see, I may be I may be wrong. You may not agree with me. I'm telling you, some of their anger is born out of their emotions, their failures. And the only way they can do it is to express it on the child. But they never train. And you need to understand your children. There are some children that you need to talk to them. They hear, they understand, they, keep, they, start, they start crying. They change immediately. But I tell you, there are some children, you speak, speak, they will not understand you until you beat them. So you need to understand, don't beat the one that you need to use the word for. And don't use the word for the one that you need to beat. The only thing people will say to me in my life is that, my dad knows. After he beat with me to a certain level, he realized I wasn't changing. One day he just told me, he said, and you are my first son. I'm disappointed in you. He was like, I just started crying. I hate people when they say that. So that's why I try to live circumspectly. I don't want to see something like that. Pastor, you get did this. I say, ah. I say, Pastor, you too. Me too, I will not do like this. I'm sorry. As long as I want to be a good person. I desire it. It is also expected of us as every man, every, every father, every mother to be disciplined in the way we do our things. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6. Proverbs 22 verse 6. Proverbs 22 verse 6. He says, train up a child in the way that he should go. Teach him to seek God's wisdom and will, and, and will for his abilities and talents. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Three. Number three. Spiritual guidance. Guide your children. Pray for them. We live in a country where everybody is busy. Create a time to have a fellowship. If you can't do morning devotion, do evening devotion. And it doesn't need to take... Morning devotion can be ten minutes. Take open levels. Read it. If you like open levels, read it. If you don't like open levels, look for another one. There's something God you in it. Do the same place I will seek to worship song and pray. They read. They read the Bible. You read the outline. Pray for them as they go. It's not more than that. It's not that you are doing one hour service or 30 minute service. Just do it. Because you see, when you train them up in the way of the Lord, I'm telling you, they may veer off. But what will bring them back, we still bring them back. I tell people, if you train up a child in place of praise, in the place of doing it as it's growing, the juvenile delinquencies, the activity of tasting everything, knowing everything, getting to get everything, and if we are home, I say, I'm not coming to church. You know, it's a matter of time, I'm telling you, you're still going to come back to church. Because he or she is rooted. Don't miss that opportunity. I tell you, Sas and Mas, the psychology of human beings says that every child, as we have here, the character that we have, is being formed from the day we were born to age nine. That's we are eighty percent, seventy percent of our character is being formed. All these children, nine years. If you train them up, that as we don't have. We don't have money. We are struggling. We are suffering. They will grow to that level. And even in their whole day, as they grow in the journey of life, they believe that suffering is a way of life. And then another 15% is from the age 9, maybe to the age 19. That's when they are now see psychedelic guys. They suck their pants. They move around. That's when they, they are forming the next 15% of their life. 
Now, after the age of 21, you only have 5% till the day you die. So your character is formed by the age of 19. And that's why you don't miss the opportunity that you have with your children where they are, when they are less than 19. Because the moment they are 19, they are going to college. And when they get to college, au revoir, they're gone. So you don't blame people, old people. I see people around me. I don't blame them because of their character. I look at their background. What are the, what are the wounds that they've gotten in their, in their life as they were growing up? So if you train them up with the word, I say, we never enough, not enough, not enough. They grow to a certain level in their life, and they don't, even though God has blessed them, they will still be big thinking that it's never enough. Uh, uh, enough. I was talking there, when we were growing up, there was, I mean, there was, since they told us about this couple, God has blessed them, they have, they have money and they're doing well. But you know, husband and wife, they had these serious issues, and they could not solve. And you know what? Because the wife grew up from, a background of civil servants. We have this barely enough. And the husband comes from a family of more than enough. And you know what caused their problem? You know the toothpaste you were using in those days, not now that it's plastic. In those days, it's made up of, of um, al aluminum foil or something like that. That when you, when, you, when you press it, you have to roll the butt. You press it, you roll it, roll it. And so the guy from a rich family just feel that he just grab the toothpaste from the middle, press it and use it. But the wife, every time he does that, the wife will try and make it to the front. And then when they finish using it, the guy will say, ah, it's finished. So he said, the wife said, no, it still remain. He will still be pressing it again. To the front, then he uses us to cut it, and then they begin to... The guy said, what kind of life is this? And it became a big issue. You are, wa you are wasteful. Oh, that's not being wasteful. I just feel that's okay. You are wasteful. And then this one said that one, that one said that one, this one said that one. And become a big problem. You know the problem? The problem is not the initial problem. The problem is the foundation. How they grow up. You must, you must do everything. Chin, chin, chin. Where, meanwhile, the guy comes from everywhere and says, Let's enjoy it while, while it lasts. So, SARS and MARS. It, 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 number, uh, the next one, which is interceding daily. The scripture says, we have read, Job chapter 1 verse 15 says, verse 1 to 15, 1 to 5 says, he was praying for his children. Don't stop praying for your children because that's the responsibility of a father. I tell you, Sasa Mas, being a father is tough. But I'm telling you, it's a privilege. Because the box stops at your table. We'll be, we'll be in a situation, children will be crying. Wife will even be crying. A situation where the dad begins to cry. Then there's no hope for the family again. Some years ago, I went for a wedding. And I was officiated there. And I sat there. And the lady, and the guy was at the front, you know, well dressed, suit, flower everywhere. I liked the suit. The guy dressed well. I liked that guy. Now I say I called dreadlock. It was good. Man, fine. Beard. I won't, when I grow up, I'm going to have that one. He had it. Good. Yeah. And he was there. And you know, while the wife was coming, I didn't just know what distracted me. The guy started crying. And the pastor said, and, then, <laughs> and he was crying. And I called the pastor that said, I said, what is his problem? He said, pastor, it's going to be okay. I said, ah, it's so okay. He's crying on the day of his wedding. Is there any problem? He said, no, it's going to be okay. When we finish the wedding, and I said, what's the problem? He said, he's crying because he saw his wife. His wife is beautiful. A family where a man cries like that, because you see something, we're fine. Something, that's why you are crying. No? We have been trained to, to be tough. Especially if you come from African descent, for some of us. When you cry, they ask you, why are you crying like a, like, like, like a woman? When you talk too much, they say, why are you talking? Why are you talking like a woman like this? So we have been trained to internalize things. But I tell you, sirs and mas, men, we also have emotions. We may not talk, we will not say it out. When they get, any man gets to a point in his life, he's not talking again. He's wounded. Let's let everything flow. Have as a father, please. Have a good energy around you. Positive energy. Have a positive energy. Tony, Tony Rob, Robin says, energy flows where attention goes. 
energy flows where attention goes which means if you give your man attention if you give your wife attention there's going to be good vibes good energy fathers are mentally and emotionally stressed so is also for women mothers are equally stressed but i'm telling you when husband is stressed father is stressed mother is stressed and you bring the stress into the house i'm telling you the whole house and the whole family is going to be on fire so it's going to be in a journey of life that when one is stressed the somebody should be there the other one should be somebody that will calm down his stress i'm not going to let it be that's going to be me that will make it the house go on fire you may and how do you know as a man i'm talking to some men because i have a he family that are joining us how do you know that you are stressed number one is that things irritate you easily you just shout you just you just you nag you small thing just snap some things about you sir you need to go for therapy so your children are just dancing around you say oh children why are you should you get it their mother will say eh, my children come 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 go inside the room something is wrong with your dad you find it very hard to sleep you sleep on this side you sleep on that side the scripture says he given his beloved sleep when i hit the bed i run you know what it means i snow my wife will jack me jack me sometimes i say no no understand i sleep see this world is not coming to an end i lost my mom when i was 11 years I'm sitting here. Some people lost their dad. They never even, they didn't, yet they are still living. I'm telling you, sons and mass. Fathers, enjoy your life. Mothers, enjoy your life. One of our mommies came into the church today and we we're talking. We we're just talking about our children, the current generation of these children that we have. Let me tell you, the generation of the children that we have, they are not like us. We served our parents. We are still serving them. This generation, they, they are not sending you. They are not going to take care of you. You better take care of yourself. Go for medical checkup. Use medication if you need to use medication. And use your faith if you can use your faith. Take care of yourself. Life goes on. And I tell you, you know that you are depressed. You know that you are mentally and emotionally stressed. Is when you lose interest in things that used to imp imp interest you before. Pains and headaches. You are not really having peace of mind. You don't like loneliness. But you are still distancing yourself from people. Why? You are the one that is backing, backing, backing in the house. Your children are running away from you. Their children are running away. You say, ah, you're calling your wife. Why, why are you making the children run away from me? Hey, Hello. They will run. And that means you are emotionally unstable. And you need prayers. At this point, I want you to know, if you are hearing me today as a father, it is only God that can give you peace. Oh. And he can't give you peace until you ask from him. Scripture says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse, that, verse 3. Isaiah 26, verse 3. He says you will keep in perfect peace in perfect and constant peace the one whose mind is steadfast that is committed and focused on you in both inclination and character because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confidence confident expectation such a mass i beg you please take the peace of god let the peace of god be with you and for you as a father please let me tell you living at peace is not easy especially when you are with your spouse husband or wife and that's why the scripture says in the book of first peter chapter 3 first peter chapter 3 verse 7 first peter chapter 3 verse 7 he says in the same way you husband live with your wife in an understanding way with great gentleness and tact and with an intelligent regard for marriage relationship if not for anything for the marriage relationship as with someone physically weak physically
physically weaker. Since she is a woman, show her honor and respect as a fellow heir of the grace of life. Now, what is the caveat there? So that your prayers will not be hindered or ineffective. Sars and mass. If you are here as a father, you are praying for things and prayers are not answered. Have you checked it? Do you hear what God says here? Live at peace with your wife. Forgive her in advance. You see all this high blood pressure medication that you are using. You know, they block a man, a man, a, man a, a lady had, a woman had um, cancer. After they'd done everything and she's not getting healed. You know what the doctor told her? He said, go and forgive everybody. He said, after two months, come back. Let's start the, let's start the treatment again. She called everybody. Because, you know, the doctor made her afraid. Told her that she only has two months to live. And said, madam, you want to make heaven? Say yes. Make sure that you forgive everybody. When two months, forgive everybody. Preparing to die. The doctor said, go and, go and do test again. They realize that now the cancer that looks as if it's going to kill. The growth of the cancer has, has, has stopped and it started diminishing. Why? Because she decided to forgive. You see, this word, you know, it's not awful. Just live at peace. It's not easy. Believe at peace. Somebody is looking at me today. He said, Pastor, sometimes you can have, it can, be, it can be both ways. If you have people that are called narcissists, as a wife or as a husband, people that feel that they are, they are, they are always right, everybody is wrong. Something anybody says that makes them think that they are wrong. God is saying, live at peace with them. I was speaking to somebody during the week. The woman told me, say, Pastor, you don't seem to understand my husband. There's nothing that I do that my husband likes. The husband is always complaining about everything. Complaining that I don't know how to go. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how to dress. I, don't know. I said, eh, eh, eh. I said, I said, Zah, number one, thank God that you are married. Number two, thank God that you have children. I said, do you have three or four things that you can appreciate God for in your life? He said, yes. He said, let us appreciate God for that one first. Let's leave the issue of your husband. See, if you don't, I beg you, Sars and Mars, go before the mirror in your house, if you have. If you don't have a mirror, you see when you are coming to the church, by these two glass doors, when you just stand in front of it, it looks like a mirror. Look at yourself. And if you look at yourself there, please, make sure that you like what you see in the mirror. Forget about something they said, whatever people say about you. I've been praying that I want to have six parts. I don't have six parts, but I have three parts. This one here, this one here, this one here. Anytime I stand before the mirror naked, I appreciate God for my three parts because I know the rest three parts, they are still coming. Celebrate what you have. Nobody can make you happy. Not your wife, not your husband, not your children. Take responsibility of your life. We need you around. Don't go and die. If you die, life goes on. So sass and mass. Please say, oh, my wife is narcissist. My husband is a... See, I'm telling you, you are just killing yourself softly. Like Pastor said. Now, things to do to be a good father as we wrap up. Make a choice to be happy. That's it. Number, it's going to be your choice. Nobody will make you happy. Make a choice to be happy. Number two, forgive. I've mentioned that one also. Forgive people. Learn to forgive. It's, it's very hard. Learn to, especially people that will offend you and they will see it claiming the right that they are, they are right. Forgive. Number three, pray always. But don't pray prayers in fear. So many of us will pray because we are afraid. And because you are afraid, you sleep. And when you sleep, you have bad dreams or bad things happening to you. The scripture makes us to understand, because I'm not reading that one, please. The scripture says, in concerning, <clears throat> concerning Job, in Job chapter 3, verse 25 to 26, Job 3, 25 to 26, the scripture says, Job was offering the sacrifice that he told us in, in Job chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Not because but he was afraid. And when the whole thing came down, and the, uh, the bubble busted, the children died, and he was being tempted and other things, he said, what I fear grave, greatly had come upon me. Because he was expecting that that thing will happen. What is on your, in your heart? Why are you praying? God help me. When I was, when I was, when I was, we were pastoring a church. 
there was some years back a, a lady was in a choir one girl in a choir you know what the mom will come the mom will say ah i have i know that this girl the way this girl is going she's going to be i'm talking back home in africa this girl is going to be pregnant it is said it's in secondary school the way she, she saw her around here he, one day the girl said the girl said came to me say mommy put me put me in the room M mommy was trying to check am i still a virgin or not I said, you mean what? He said, mom, pull my pants. I was checking my name. But you know what? The girl still did not finish secondary school. She became pregnant. The mom was so afraid. Sir, it, ma, there are some prayers that we are praying that is born out of fear. Hey, life goes on. Let, let it be. God is a very good God. He got everything in control. Pray always. Pray for it. As a good father, pray always. Like I said, number three, love. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Love without discrimination. Just write it down. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Number four, that is expected to be a good father. Control your thoughts. Control your anger. Control your thoughts. Please control your anger. We are always angry. We can disagree. We can, we can, but we shouldn't argue. Because argument doesn't bring anything good. Because at the heat of time, nobody is hearing themselves. This one is shouting, that one is shouting. Nobody is hearing. Disagree. Don't argue. I don't do this. I, do. I, I like when I'm talking, when I'm having my children. I tell them, that's bad. Don't do that again. And I put it aside. Oh, so how was the place you went to? No, no. That's why you did it two days ago, three years ago, 15 years ago. Ah. I don't know whether you go. I don't know what, whether that was what they taught our fathers in those days. My father, when he was alive, he had a one book, high education like this. It's brown. I can never forget the color of that book. Brown like this. They have red tape at the bread. It's hard cover. Everything, every sin that every one of them, every one of us committed, he wrote it down there. I remember I told you the day I went to go and steal rob. You know, rob. The pack of rope. He wrote it there. 19, 19, 19, 19, what year was that? He said, maybe he said, 19, 1978, Muiwa stole rope from, he must be punished. It's even put the judgment there. Let go. Eh? Control your thoughts. Control your hunger. I'll give you a story and I'll wrap up. There's a man that has three wives. He has a younger one. And I tell you, the wife was... The man called the wives and told them, I have the secrets of my longevity and my wealth. It's in a calabash. He took them to where the calabash is and showed them the place. He said, if anything is going wrong, it doesn't matter where I am. Please, all of you, try to protect this calabash. It must not touch the ground. The, and the, the, he said, don't let it touch the ground because the moment it touches the ground, I'm, die, I'm dead. This man offended, in the, in the journey of life, offended the last wife. And the last wife felt that, what can I do to this, my husband? That we be, and, the wife, and, the, and, and you know what? That girl, that wife, last wife, ran to the room where the calabash was. And he took hold of the calabash. The moment she heard the calabash, everybody, the other two wives came. They were begging, please, don't. She said she's going to smash the calabash. The man said, please. Every the man was begging. Everybody, because she's already holding the calabash. As much as they begged her, she said no. And at the end of it, you know what? The lady just took the calabash and smashed the calabash. And the husband started rolling on the floor. Started rolling on the floor. The old people came around. How do we survive? How does he survive it? Pouring water, doing everything. At the end of it all, the man stood up. The man said, I use it to try you. There are so many of us that when we are hungry, we don't care. We just use our mouth to spoil everything. Will you change today? For you as a man, as I wrap up with you, sir, I, I beg you, whatever that you are going through in your marriage, in your life, don't ever give up. Somebody, somebody needs that 
experience. Somebody needs that experience. I beg you in the name of God, be your brother's keeper. And I want all the men in the house to rise to their feet. Men, men, women, sit down. Men, thank you. I know so many of us, because of situation, we are turned to, situation has made us obey the, doing, playing the two roles. I appreciate God for your life. I feel you, sir. I feel you, sir. But I won't tell you, even though they didn't send me, on behalf of your wives and your children, if they have offended you, I say they are sorry. And please forgive. And number two, I beg you, we need you around. The four hands are still carrying the load. It's still difficult. People say, I will move on. Hey! Forget about what you see on Facebook and social media, it's Instagram. You see, any woman, any girl that is a single mother, and you are seeing the person on social media every time, dancing on social media, wearing new clothes, eh, eh, it's just trying to show to people. They are trying to tell people that I'm okay. I'll tell you, it's not okay, oh. The grass is not greener on the other side. It's synthetic grass, so you cannot eat it. Too. So I beg you, if you have withdrawn yourself and you are like the man that says, is it okay? Okay. And whatever you say is correct. Please, I beg you, come out of your cocoon again. Our mommies are, our wives are here, they are listening. They want you around. They didn't like the new, the, the new, the latest version that you are. They want the whole fashion of the day, the time you came together and you love yourself. Please just give it a trial again. They told us. They said that the vine, vine man, vine yard man planted a tree and it was supposed to be a vine. It was supposed to get fruit out of it. And nothing was coming. And he told the husband man, he said, Cut it down. It's just a covering the land. The husband man said, let's leave it alone for a while, for another year. Let's dig and dung around about it. Let's put my noise in it again. And let's pray. Can you give it a chance again one more time? Give your marriage a chance again. Give your wife a chance again. Give your husband a chance again. For some of us that we are here. And that we are ladies. And I pray the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Oh, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. All of us, let's rise to our feet. Let's just speak to God. Father, please make me and mold me according to your will. Make me and mold me according to your will. Just go ahead and pray to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, oh Lord, make me, mold me. In the name of Jesus, according to your will, make me a good wife. Make me a good husband. Make me good children. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Let it mix with faith in us in Jesus' name. For every man, for every father in the house, Father, we pray, oh Lord, he gets to be a good fight. Father, indeed. Father, give unto them in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, help them to be a good example. Thank you, Almighty Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Somebody say it louder. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Let's have a say. I know that um, um, I, I said I'm going to spend 30 minutes, but I'll spend 37 minutes. But I'm still within the time they gave to me because I'm supposed to minister for 40 minutes. So I'm still within the time. Is there anything again or just? Oh, okay, sir, sister. Oh, oh, we sir, sir, thank you. So, the Lord bless you. I see you again. Clap your hands.